Welcome traders to this week's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, before we get going here, 2 p.m. British summertime. Uh, if I can just do a quick audio check, if you can hear me loud and clear, and you can see uh, the Tickmill welcome screen, if you just, just type a Y in the chat box so that I know we are, uh, we're good to go. Thanks very much. Okay, let's get going. Before we start, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Um, most importantly, really, for today's uh, discussion is to understand that the views expressed uh, by me here today are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Um, also, just some, uh, some housekeeping, I guess. Uh, I'm going to run through a bunch of charts that, uh, that I'm looking at and potential setups that I'm tracking at the moment. Um, if you have any questions with respect to anything uh, discussed today, or you would like me to take a look at a chart that I don't cover in my deck, um, just uh, make a note of any questions and save those to the end. I'll open it up for a brief Q&A and we can, uh, we can cover off those at the end. Uh, so, just briefly for those who are here for the first time, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found an exit a consulting startup, focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose the fortune in the markets quite literally at times overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. So with some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down, uh, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six figure financial hit to my personal capital. Uh, so this was a gut wrenching and sobering experience as an understatement. I had to really stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent uh, trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game, uh, researched, developed extensively back and forward tested strategies that crucially uh, suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Uh, but most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused purely on financial gains to becoming a process oriented individual. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to start focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which uh, you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, from 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in some other market orientated projects. Uh, I'm resident market experts, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill, uh, providing an in depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setups for two or three markets on a daily basis. I also run uh, Tickmill's rapidly growing um, e mini strategy group, uh, where I provide daily. 
and specific daily trade plan with intraday trade updates. Since its inception in April, I've delivered over 850 points of upside. My other passion project is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called FX Career Swap, offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Most recently, I've been involved in developing the Trader Blueprint Strategy Group, which, uh, in which is a professional trading community where traders of all experience levels can access daily institutional insights from tier one investment banks, um, and market strategy teams. There are all regular market bulletins with in-depth positioning and sentiment analysis. Actionable real-time chart analysis with daily setups and trading updates from our expert traders. With live trader education sessions, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered if you're going to make it as a pro. Uh, the Trader Blueprint Strategy Group, actually, we're offering a, uh, a two-week free trial to that group. If you uh, use that uh, URL there, you can access or request a uh, two-week trial. Uh, we're also offering the same with the eMini uh, Strategy Group as well. So you can use that link to, uh, to request membership. And if you're interested in finding out more about FX Career Swap, you can, uh, you can call the Trade Desk in London there or drop them an email, and I'm sure they will respond with uh, relevant information uh, as quickly as possible. So that uh, gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And now let's, uh, let's move into some of these charts. I'm just gonna adjust my screen. Uh, before I jump into uh, the technical, uh, technical charts, what I actually wanted to do, first of all, there was an interesting uh, note out from City this morning from their FX uh, team, uh, which, I sh uh, which I want to just uh, take a quick look at here. And what they have identified, or what they're, they're basically uh, reviewing is their, their dollar bear call, basically their dollar short call, which obviously um, in light of very recent market action had, uh, had been under pressure. Uh, this chart here is basically the uh, US 10 year yield, nominal uh, versus real yield overlaid with the dollar index. And uh, what, what they're highlighting here is that this uh, divergence, uh, normally when it does occur uh, to this degree, normally the gap closes. And so they're, they're looking for uh, the dollar to basically trade down to 89.25 uh, would be the level that of, of in, uh, where they're looking for uh, as, a min as a minimum downside objective. Uh, they also look at, uh, they overlay the 10 year nominal minus break even yield over the DXY with a 16 month lag. So that's where you can see the two charts there. And the logic uh, for this is that the Fed e easing to zero and QE, lower nominal and real yields and steepening curves set the store for future direction uh, for the dollar with a bit of a lag. So again, what they're suggesting here is that the, uh, the divergence should draw the dollar to the downside as it has done in, uh, in previous sections. And so what they're saying is that this chart suggests that we, uh, we, could, we should see a much lower dollar as we head into 2022. And on the daily time frame, uh, they're looking at a potential head and shoulders scenario breaking down here and a move back to test 92 as support. On the long-term charts continue to look structurally bearish. Uh, the long-term picture continues to look like a major double top on the DXY. The neckline of this pattern is 88.25, and the monthly close below, if seen, uh, to their mind, would suggest a move as low as uh, 2011, below 73. And um, the dollar last year posted an outside bearish year, as, uh, as monthly, most of you will remember, I posted charts on that. And this is the, uh, the pattern they're looking at, the double top here. And if we can get it closed through 88.25, they think we've got uh, significant room to the downside. And this all fits in with their structural long-term downtrend of lower lows and lower highs for the last uh, 43 years on the, um, on the DXY, uh, characterized by a trend of lower highs, Dow theory here uh, for the last 43 years, posted marginal low lows, and then the prior cycle lasted a period of about seven years. So if we jump to the chart, you can see exactly what it is they, uh, they're looking at there for the dollar. So they're looking for a dollar to, to trend lower over these uh, into 2024. 
And this is the euro chart, which I posted at the back end of the last year, showing the outside, bullish outside year for the euro last year. So let's jump into some charts now. Um, and we will start, let's actually start with that, uh, that DXY. So what I've, what I've been looking for is ultimately the dollar index to test this uh, big quality objective, 93, uh, 73 there to the upside. We, um, we were holding this uh, trend line support here. We broke through it last night, obviously, with Powell uh, tap, tapping the brakes, so to speak, on the, on the tapering tool and, uh, and putting the focus back on employment. If we, uh, if we start to roll over here, then the next level of interest is going to be the 91.51. We could still then uh, put in a, a tradable bounce there to get that test of the 93.73 level. And really at this stage, um, I, what, what I'd need to see to, uh, to really get excited about the potential for um, the downside continuation is we need to take out this trend, uh, this pitchfork support area. So at the moment that's coming in around the 91 handle. So we need to see it close below there really uh, to negate further upside and suggest that the, uh, the trend to the downside is, is under resumption. So uh, just a little bit cautious here on getting too bearish at current levels when, uh, when we can still see uh, one more pop to complete the sequence here into that, uh, that 93.73. That's gonna be a pivotal test uh, for, the, for the dollar. Um, and, and obviously then that feeds into the Euro. We'll just take a quick look at the Euro whilst we're talking about those two. Um, there we go. So uh, I'm long the Euro uh, on that nice outside reversal candle yesterday. And again, I'm not getting too carried away here because I think uh, we could still see, looking at the momentum here, we're, we're pretty overbought. Uh, bearing in mind we've had this consolidation. So I'm going to be paying close attention to how we trade at this 119 handle because I think we could still see another pullback here, uh, test that 118.30 uh, area as support. If buyers step in there, then we would have an equality objective putting us into the top side of the uh, descent which we'll here at, uh, well, towards 120 is the upside. So I'm risk-free here on, uh, on my entry uh, in this trade, and I'm just going to see, we could extend. Um, if we can get through that 119, then, we, then I would anticipate this type of pattern developing, get this move straight up into the 120, and then we set up the potential uh, for an inverse head and shoulders scenario to, uh, to develop. But for now, the focus is going to be on how we uh, have prices respond at this uh, at this first go at 119. If we do get a pullback, we look for support into the 118.30 as uh, as the next uh, pivotal area in terms of the in terms of the euro. Um, let's go back first of all now and just update where we are in terms of these equity markets. I think we're coming into a very interesting period uh, with, uh, with these global equity markets. Uh, the the S&P found support at the prior highs at the uh, 43.88 level. And whilst we hold here, I'm looking for one more high basically to complete a sequence. Uh, thinking about 44.37 uh, to 44.92 into the top side, third test of this uh, ascending, uh, oh, sorry, ending diagonal pattern that we're, we're potentially trading in here. So any move into this area, I'm gonna be paying very close attention to, watching for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions for uh, what has a tendency to be uh, a pretty volatile period during, uh, during August. So then I'd be looking for a three-way pullback and certainly we can think about this area at 42.30 as a logical area of, uh, of support to be tested. And then we'll see uh, how the next phase is going to develop. NASDAQ is in a similar situation. I'm looking for one more high here in the NASDAQ to complete, uh, to complete this sequence. And the area of interest to me at the moment is this uh, 15,300. Certainly going to be very interesting, paying very close attention uh, on both the daily and the intraday timeframes, trying to get, uh, see if we can front run a potential daily reversal into this 15,300 zone. Um, and again, what we'd anticipate then is a, a three wave corrective pattern. And I'd be looking really for it to, uh, to replicate the, this type of price action. So we get up into that 15,300. I'm going to be looking for short positions, targeting move back in to retest 
essentially 14,000 as, uh, as the next uh, area of, uh, of support to the downside. So that one is uh, it's also on my radar. I've got the Dow updated this uh, earlier this week. So again, looking for the Dow to make one more high here to complete uh, this interim third wave of, uh, of the bigger weekly cycle that we've been in. So uh, you can see we had that initial move out of the, of the lows, the pandemic lows there, and um, that's subdivided into five wave ABC correction. We're now in one, two, three, we've got a potential interim four. So I'm looking for a fifth wave extension here, ideally to retest this trend line that it broke out of uh, as resistance up into uh, 35,600 zone. And from there again, with this great momentum divergence we've got in play, I'm looking for bearish reversal patterns. And I think we can get a move back down, uh, certainly to test uh, 33,000. And maybe this uh, broadening top pattern scenario plays out and we get a move to test 32,300 before uh, the next leg to the upside, which will ultimately complete then the weekly cycle uh, from those pandemic lows. And from there, we can see a more uh, meaningful corrective phase develop. Uh, but still uh, ta tra tactically looking for, uh, for short opportunities here. But uh, structurally, this, uh, this remains a, uh, a bull market and I'll be looking to buy uh, the next uh, three wave uh, corrective pattern uh, for new highs to, uh, to develop into year end is, uh, is the strategy there. Nikkei, this one is uh, trying, to, uh, trying to hold on here. I'm, uh, as, we hold, as we're trading below this 29,468, the quality objective is 25,900. Now, what, what ideally I'd like to see is, uh, is this Nikkei getting, test this trend line resistance again, get, uh, we've also got weekly range resistance there, at uh, 28,475. So if we can get into that area, watch for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions. And I, the, the sequencing would be great here is if, if we get that test into this zone, or maybe we extend higher and we test the, the descending trend line on resistance, either, either one of those two areas. If we're doing that in the Nikkei at the point at which we're making new highs in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, um, that would give great synchronicity and uh, cycles here for the Nikkei to then to, to sell off to test the equality objective and for those um, uh, and then for the S&P and the NASDAQ to sell off. By the time the Nikkei gets to this target, I would anticipate that the correction in the, um, in the NASDAQ and the S&P should also be completing then. And this is going to be a major uh, point of interest because this could set up then the, uh, the next leg of, of upside in all equity markets, really. Uh, so this is going to be a pivotal period for the Nikkei and, um, and, the, and the US equity markets as well, are the ones I'm tracking. And then obviously the VIX, still a hot, hot story here. Um, we seem to be tracking quite nicely this, uh, this consolidation that we Oh, oh, sorry, this, this prior, uh, prior period of spike in the VIX, which was also uh, August of 2020. And you can see the extent to the upside. We extended it. The scale obviously is slightly different here, but the pattern looks similar at this stage. So we looked for some consolidation and then a pop in August to the upside. And again, that should be when we get that low in the new, uh, we should have a new high in equity markets during this consolidation period. And then we get the pop in the VIX, which sends the, uh, we should see equity markets trading lower. Dollar we've just talked about, 10-year uh, yields, obviously important to keep an eye on these at the moment, as, uh, as a lot of the price action has been driven by the, uh, a lot of price action in terms of uh, Forex markets has been driven by the yields. And I've said, I've shown this chart before, but we just update it here. You can see we're mimicking the, uh, the periods uh, summer two, uh, 2017. So what I'd anticipate is, whilst we hold this channel, I'll be looking for the yields to make uh, one more low, and then for us to, uh, to look at the extension to the upside into uh, the back end of this year and early uh, 2022, as the Fed should, at a minimum, uh, we would anticipate uh, be tapering, and that should, um, that should see these yields pop. And so uh, again, we have the Jackson Hole uh, Symposium, where the, uh, the global central bankers gather, the great and the good, um, end of August. And so I'd like to see 
uh, yields put in a low there, and then we could see a, a rally in yields into the into the back end of the year. Gold, um, long gold, as uh, as how disappointed the markets uh, last night. We've got a nice bullish setup. Uh, I was looking for the break of the trend line. We've got that now. And so my objective, uh, certainly we want to see test of 18.44, ideally now en route to test 18.71 uh, to the upside there in gold is, uh, is what I'm looking for, risk-free position running there. Silver, pivotal test coming for silver here, the descending trend channel, the prior uh, sending trend line support to act as resistance. Let's see how silver trades into 25.86 area. We get through there and, uh, and then we can start to think about uh, 2730s, this descending trend line resistance. But uh, we'll see, obviously, silver to, to a large extent and gold at the moment, but um, this is going to be a pivotal test and to keep an eye on. Crude oil, looking for, uh, looking for a test here of the 78.6% retracement. So it's that 74, uh, 44. And then watching for bearish reversal patterns to ultimately get a test of this major ascending trend line support from, uh, from the pandemic lows there before we put in uh, a meaningful low to get uh, take a run then at the top side of the channel and thinking about uh, prices up towards 80, $86 there in terms of crude oil. So we'll see, looking for bearish reversal patterns at 70, just above 74 and then looking for a 66 test before, uh, before we try and make another run higher. Bitcoin um, posted this one a uh, couple of, uh, well, last week, or was it the week before, as the chart here, technical setup. I was looking at two key areas, basically. We either take, took out this trend line resistance or this support. If we took out the support, I was looking at 20K. Uh, we took out trend line resistance on the upside. I was looking for 40. We've just achieved that target now. Consolidating here. Uh, going to be pivotal to see how we trade at this descending trend line resistance from the highs there, because... Uh, we could still see uh, we could still see another leg to the downside if that holds. Uh, if we consolidate here um, and get a pullback to test this uh, thirty six thousand as support, let me, let me draw the same for you. Move that one. So the bullish scenario will be we, we trade in here, uh, test this trend, descending trend line resistance. We pull back, but hold. The 36,200 area as support that could then set uh, the next leg to the upside to mount an assault on, uh, on 50k. Ethereum, similar idea, it hasn't made quite as much progress as, as Bitcoin, but again, if we consolidate here now and we, uh, we pull back and test uh, 2094 or 2090 area as support. Then there's still a chance that Ethereum pops and we get uh, going to move up into 2889 on the upside. Dollar Yuan uh, testing pivotal support here now uh, for the Dollar Yuan. Uh, looking at this trend line, if we take this trend line out, then um, the next area of focus is going to be a potential inverse head and shoulder scenario uh, with a test back down to that 640 handle. But if we if we can hold there, then that will set up. Uh, an equality objective uh, that will put us back through uh, 658 on the upside and uh, and back into uh, then back into a, a more constructive structure. Uh, but if we fail to hold uh, this uh, 640 as support, then we could be looking for new lows in the dollar line, and obviously that will uh, add pressure to the dollar index. Dollar yen. <coughs> Consolidating really as we hold 110.72, I'm still looking for 108.58. Um, without dollar yen, obviously trades to, to a degree. And to, well, there are periods when it's highly correlated, periods when it's less correlated. But at the moment, you can see the similarities in terms of uh, dollar yen and uh, ten-year yields. So until we get some uh, some more distinct tapering talk uh, from the uh, from Powell, then I think this one's pretty much chopping in a range. Dollar Swiss is testing its equality objective. Key test here for the, for the Swiss team. If we can get a bullish reversal pattern here from this 9070, get a close back through uh, the uh, pitchfork here, so somewhere above 9120, then that could be an opportunity on uh, on the long side for the dollar Swiss. Otherwise, we want, uh, what we can conceivably see here developing 
certainly as we go through uh, the, the lull, the summer lull in, uh, in August, we could be then thinking about this type of price action and that playing out over here. So we could be in for a, a bit of consolidation here uh, before the next move is decided. Dollar CAD, looking for a test of the uh, this trend line here on 23.70 and then the potential for an inverse head and shoulders scenario uh, to play out there in the loony. So we have uh, you know, this type of structure. And then we take off uh, to the upside in terms of dollar CAD. So we'll see, this is gonna be a pivotal test here down into the 123.70s. Otherwise we have technically completed the quality objective and we could be thinking about new lows if, uh, if buyers don't step in and defend that uh, 123.35 zone. Uh, Sing dollar, getting the pullback here. So we'll see now if we can hold these uh, this area at uh, 135.29. If we can get bullish reversal patterns here, then uh, I'd be looking for uh, for some upside here in terms of the uh, in terms of the Sing Sing dollar euro we just talked about euro yen held the symmetry support and uh, trying to take out the descending trend line resistance. We get through there, um, then we can start to think about uh, 131.20s and up into monthly range resistance at 132.60 for uh, Euro Yen. Let's see what I would do on time. Okay, a couple more minutes. Uh, let's just see. Watching Sterling Yen here, pivotal test. We've got a couple of these uh, Sterling crosses and the major sitting at pivotal uh, resistance areas here. I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns. I think we can see uh, a pullback here, certainly in the uh, the, the cable and, uh, and Sterling Yen could be of interest here. I'm gonna watch very closely how we, we trade, could be setting in a head and shoulders top scenario here. So this is gonna be a key, key test for uh, Sterling Yen, uh, 153.70s, I'm gonna be looking at that. Uh, also on the four hour time frames and see if we can get, uh, get an opportunity to do something on the short side there to, uh, to test this head and shoulders scenario. Uh, I've been running there for, uh, for just under 30 minutes. Um, didn't get a chance to go through all the charts I had, uh, but you get an idea of what it is I'm looking at. I'm basically, I'm stalking uh, equity indexes for a new high and a, a fade. I'm long the euro, short dollar, obviously at this stage and uh, I'm long gold, but I am watching Sterling now at some key levels here as a potential opportunity uh, to fade some of this strength we've seen. And um, yeah, so that pretty much brings you up to speed with, with where I'm at. So I'll briefly open the floor here uh, for some questions. Uh, hello. Uh, okay, any, uh, are there any questions? You have, uh, I'll also just, whilst we're, I'm waiting to see, I'll post the links for, um, this is the link here for the uh, e-mini strategy group. I'll also post the link for um, the, uh, let's see, one second here. This is the link for the uh, Trader Blueprint Strategy Group. You can request a, uh, a two-week trial. If I can find that, there we go. That's the one. Uh, there's the link for that. So those are the, the two groups I referenced at the beginning here, and uh, you can request access for a trial by, uh, by using either of those links. Okay, equally, if you don't have a question, it's helpful for me if you type an N in the chat box so I know we're all on the same page and I've done a relatively good job of explaining uh, what it is I'm seeing at the moment. Good stuff. Okay, if, uh, if there aren't any questions, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thanks very much for your time. I hope, uh, hope, this, uh, hope this stuff helps. Right. Take it easy. Bye now.